here. Uh, how about a round of applause to the team at Small Business Expo? of the slot machines and made it into the room, so thank you for being here. Uh, it's uh, exciting to be in, in Vegas again. The last time I was here was 18 years ago. Uh, my wife and I actually came to the city at the time, my fiance. Uh, we eloped, got married by Elvis, uh, so it's nice to be back here. I actually remember uh, during that time we had a, a Sony handheld video camera with the little cassette tapes in there. We were filming things as we were going around and doing all of that stuff. And it's amazing that now we can do all that stuff with somebody's filming over there, right? With a little device, the smartphone. Um, this is the world that we live in, right? Uh, we're in this place where it's the smartphone world. Does anybody here not have a smartphone? Okay, good. I've only had one person so far raise their hand when I've asked that question. It's really amazing when you think about your business, right, where you have this device that somebody has with them at all times, and you have this opportunity to connect with them, to start building those relationships that are important to your business. And you can do that namely, I'm not going to talk about apps right now, I feel like that's a whole other conversation, but you really have this opportunity to do this with namely social, email, and text marketing. Right? And when you think of these tools, you have a, a thing like social media, which you know, each has its strengths and, and, its, and its minuses. Right? So you think about social. It's really great for being able to reach new people, connect and engage in a way that, in this kind of public forum that you wouldn't have uh, been able to do otherwise. But then you're kind of beholden to the algorithm, right? And what that particular uh, platform that you're using or you're focused on wants to do and give you access to, right? And then we think about email marketing. Now, most businesses, hopefully, right, are using email marketing today. And the inbox has become this very crowded place. And so you've got this thing where you own this audience. You can communicate with people as you see fit because you have that one-to-one -one relationship with them. But you're competing within the inbox with other people for attention, right? So there's limitations there as well. And then when you start thinking about text marketing, this is where things get really interesting. Because you have this device where if somebody gets a text, pretty much you're going to look at that right away, right? So you have this opportunity to get somebody's attention right away and get a message in front of them. The issue with that, of course, is you don't want to abuse that power that you have, right? Because with that, you start you know, doing too much of that or using it in the wrong way, you run the risk of turning people off, right? And so really, it's one, you're offering options if you're using these three channels. You're offering options to people for what their preferences are in terms of how they communicate and manage your business. But then you're also, you stand this really great chance in, in terms of what you can do compared to your competition by figuring out how to use each of these channels in concert, right? And using the strengths of each channel to uh, you know, move people closer to your business and get those desirable outcomes that you're looking to get. And so this is important because there are studies that show that a cross-marketing channel or cross-channel marketing uh, approach using these tools like social, email, and text actually can boost an average user's lifetime by 76%. Right? And so if you have these ways to communicate, keep your business top of mind, you're actually going to get better results and keep those customers longer. Okay? Another thing to think about here is that when we're talking specifically about email and texts, these are the two most helpful communications to consumers when making a purchase decision. So something else to keep in mind there. And then lastly, you know, the times have really changed. I mean, I remember a time, you know, not so long ago, maybe a few years ago, where I was like, I'm not giving anybody my text information, right? That's a really private channel, that's a personal channel, and I don't want to get text from a business that way. And consumers are actually, 91% of consumers are interested in signing up for text these days. And I've actually changed my mind a little bit as well, where I've actually started to sign up for those things as well, I'll show you some examples here in a little bit. But this is where the opportunity is, right? To use these three channels, to communicate, start building those relationships that help you get those desirable outcomes. So here's what we're going to cover today to kind of walk you through how to use these in the best way. We're going to talk about how social, email, and text really do help you move people closer to your business. 
then we're going to talk about how to harness the strengths of each of these channels. And then we're going to talk about just thinking about how do we create an overall brand experience with each of these channels. So again, you get people to that place where they're buying from you more, they're referring more people to you, and just engaging and talking about your business. Sound good? My name is Dave Charest. I am the Director of Small Business Success at Constant Contact. For those of you who don't know Constant Contact, we've been around for about 20, a little over 25 years now, uh, providing online marketing tools designed specifically for small businesses. I've been with Constant Contact 11 years now, and uh, people often ask me, well, what keeps you at the company for so long? And it really comes down to three things for me. One, I'm really passionate about helping small businesses and nonprofits succeed. Two, the people that I work with on a daily basis share that same passion. And three, we're all really focused on providing you with the right tools and insights so that you can start making progress from wherever you are with your business and get it to where you're trying to go. So uh, I'm really grateful for the opportunity to be with all of you here today. And again, uh, thank you all so much for choosing to come in here and uh, spend some time with us. So let's get started here. Uh, how social email and text move people closer. So a way I kind of think about this, and I'd like you to imagine this with me, is that what I want you to do is really practice what I call the party principle. Okay, so if you think about each of these channels as a big party, and we'll start with social media, right? That's kind of the biggest party there is, right? There's a whole bunch of people out in the wild, and they're talking to everybody, and it's just a big party, everybody's having a good time and connecting. And what happens when you go to a party? Typically what happens is you start to meet people, you start talking, conversing, engaging, doing all of that, and you kind of find your group of people at that party, right? And you kind of hang out with those people. So think about that as email, right? So you're at social, you're at the big party, you start to find your people at that party, and those are the people that, oh, you know, I like these people, I'm gonna spend a little bit more time with them. And so you kind of move from that big party to like a smaller party within that. That's the email channel, right? And then from there, after that kind of after party, right? You go there, you have your after party with those folks at email. It starts to get to this point where you have the people that actually, aside from this party, you actually want to connect with those people on a more regular basis, right? And this is the, the text channel, right? This is that one-to-one -one personal communication that you have with people. And so if you keep that in mind as we think about what we're trying to do at the overall, it's really invoke that party principle, right? We want to take people that are kind of out here, not familiar with our business yet, get them closer and closer to us. And in that, we start to control the relationship, right? We have direct access to our consumers versus when you're thinking about social, as I mentioned earlier, you're at the beck and whim of any change or any other platform for that matter, uh, doing something going down, doing something like that. You want to get closer to this point where you have control of how you communicate with those people. So as we move on from there, we want to talk about, all right, we have each of these channels, but how do we take advantage of those to the best of our ability? So the first thing to understand is that really each channel is a little bit different, and, and we'll continue on this kind of party idea, right? But like, think about social media. It's really about, you know, you've got this opportunity to, one, share beyond your email, these kind of private communication channels and your text messages. And it's all about engagement. It's all about engaging people on these platforms because doing so allows you to reach more people beyond the people that are already connected. So if you think about that, that's really an important thing because your customers or your people connected with you, your prospects, when they engage with you, they're connected pe to people that probably make good prospects for your business as well because we, again, connect with people that are like us, right? And so this is a good opportunity to get in front of those people and start to get more exposure for your business. And that's why this channel is really important. Now when we move to email, as I mentioned just a few minutes ago, this is really the opportunity to start reaching your audience directly, right? Somebody actually says, yes, I want you to send me emails, and then you're able to send those emails as you fit, and, and that's a good channel to do that as long as you continue to provide value in that channel and send things that people like. You're also able to do a little bit more in terms of robust messaging within an email, right? You can send a plain text email, you can add images, you can go into things at a deeper level um, because that email communication channel facilitates that. Um, and then when we get into thinking about SMS and text, right, it's really about these short messages that get read right away 
and it hits somebody's phone, usually give them that buzz right away, right? That dopamine has them look at it. And it's all about these short messages that you can send to people. Uh, and it's really best when you start thinking about time-sensitive information that you're sharing with people. So think of an event like here today. What if you get a text that was like, hey, the keynote is starting in five minutes, right? Make sure you head over to the room, right? Oh, yeah, okay, right. That hits you right at a very timely piece of communication that gets somebody to do something at that right moment. And there's also something in thinking about this channel in an exclusive manner, right? So when you have people that say, yeah, I want you to text me, just like the email, you want to provide value there, you also want to think about how can you use this in an exclusive way and do special things for that people who have given you access to them in such an important channel. Make sense? Cool, so let's, let's talk about social for a little bit and talk about specifically how we want to use that channel to the best of our ability. So really it all comes down to thinking about using social for awareness and engagement. So if you think about, you know, every time we talk to small business owners, and I'm sure you folks would agree, right? If I were to say to you, the number one way you're probably getting business now is word of mouth. Does that, does that make sense, right? Typically, when we're talking to customers, that's what they tell us. And word of mouth is happening online now these days, right? And so when we think about social, what people are doing is they're sharing information with other people that they're connected to. They're sharing things from brands that they connect with. They're sharing information. Uh, they're asking people for recommendations. And they're just you know, sharing information that they like, that they think other people, that reflects them as well, and that they think other people will like. And so if you think about that, this is how that word of mouth is happening. When somebody engages with you, shares something that you've done, or just engages with you in some other way, you're getting yourself in front of those people. So what you want to think about in each of these social channels, though, is that you have to understand that each of them has kind of their own personality. And so when you think about Facebook, for example, when you're on that Facebook feed, you're really competing with everybody's friends and family and just other news and, and all of that kind of stuff that's going on in that news feed, right? And so it's not, you got to think about that, like how your content is going to fit in and what you're sharing there and how you're trying to engage with people, does it make sense for how people are using that platform? When you think of a, you know, a, a platform like Instagram, for example, obviously that's highly visual. Video is a, 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 a promoting reels a lot right now. And so you want to think about that, like how can you create things that make an impact through that visual medium? Uh, when you think about a, a site like Pinterest, for example, uh, this is a really great thing for like designers or arts and crafts types of businesses, things like that, that allow you to share kind of like how you did it, DIY, like those types of things. Um, LinkedIn, of course, is a professional networking place, so uh, if you're talking about your business and making connections with other people in your communities to try to get you know, more connections that make sense for your business as well. Uh, Twitter, of course, is kind of that real-time network, right? And then there's lots of news and things happening in the now. And then it's also things like, although not specifically uh, a social channel, but it's a place where you think about YouTube, where people are looking for educational or entertaining information. And so if that type of thing makes sense for your business, that's something that you want to think about here. So match your approach to each of the channels. The other thing to keep in mind is that these channels have really changed today. You know, when they started, it was kind of all about, you know, doing things on the channel, connecting, but then you drop a link to your website, right? Or if you wrote a blog post or you had something that you wanted somebody to check out, you just kind of drop the link in there and you, you try and get people there. And really, you should think of this as a, as a way to kind of warm people up, right? Each of these channels now are being very selfish these days because they want everybody to stay on their platform. And so what works really well today is instead of posting a link to that blog post or doing something like that, you're actually writing that content right within the particular channel, right? So you think about uh, LinkedIn, for example, right? When you're sharing content, I share tons of content over there, uh, and tips and videos and things like that to help small businesses do better marketing, right? And we're doing that right on the platform. It's unlike before when I could have just said like, oh, come check out my website and you can find that. <coughs> trying to warm people up, so eventually they'll want to take that next step and actually find out more about you and get there. So keep that in mind as you're using those channels today. Another thing to, to think about here, and just to give you an example of kind of what this looks like, 
you want to think about modifying your post to suit up each of those channels as I was talking about here. So I have an example on the screen here from linked, uh, sorry, from, uh, on LinkedIn first from Netflix. And because that's a more professional network, what they're doing is they are sharing information about freedom and responsibility at Netflix, right? It's about, at Netflix, it's about how they are, the business of running Netflix, right? First is what they're sharing on, on Facebook, which is about the blonde premiere, right? Their new Marilyn Monroe, right? And so that's really focused more on the consumer and the people that are watching that information. And so that's just what I thought we to give you an example of how you kind of modify your tone and the things that you're talking about to suit each of those channels. When it comes to social, Right, we're not just there to do the things where we're just sharing and, and doing all of that. We actually want to think about how we move people close to the business or do things that benefit our business. And so you want to think about focusing your time and effort to really be three goals. One, it's about driving awareness for your business. Right, You do that through engagement, people engaging with your content, sharing your things, uh, commenting, liking, doing all of that to get you to other people. The other thing to think about is customer service. Oftentimes, uh, People will turn to social to try to get something rectified uh, or even just to say something nice about you, right? These are good opportunities to handle those customer service related types of things out in public so people start to see what it's like to work with you as a business. And the more people can see that, particularly when they're we had to work with you before, they're making all of these calculations of trying to figure out, right, is this the type of business that I want to work with when I'm looking for what it is that you offer? And then lastly, it's about you know, trying to get invitation type of action eventually lead into that path, right? Where you want them to come to your website. You want them to sign up for your email list. You want them to check out something, whatever the case may be. Maybe it's just comment, whatever. But you actually are trying to drive them doing some type of action, right? So think about where you focus your efforts there when it comes to social. Now the other thing to think about is if you are creating content, right? This is the stuff that kind of feeds the beast <laughs> that is social today, right? Everybody on some level is kind of their own little media company for their business, right? Where you can share information, where you can share stuff that's helpful, that will help your customers, help your prospects kind of achieve what they're trying to achieve. And as you're creating that stuff, it's all thinking about how do I take one thing and get multiple uses from it? Right, so an example I can give you is, you know, a lot of times when we do, uh, my team at Constant Contact, we do webinars, free webinars every month on a different marketing topic. Oftentimes what I'll do is I'll take one of those webinars and then I'll, I'll go through all the points that we make in that webinar and I'll make short videos to go through each of those points, the points and that's what I share on LinkedIn. And then we'll have something specific to a blog post that somebody else on the team has written. And we'll take that video and we'll post that in there, right? And so it's all these ways to start repackaging that content to kind of feed this beast that makes it work and you can get more people going there. Um, if you are fortunate enough to have one of those businesses or be in one of those industries where people are creating content for you, as in they're talking about your product or service, it's great to share that content as well and use that to your advantage. Um, and then again, just a reminder, right, that just the messages or just the formats that work best for the platform you're trying to put that information. Okay, so some tips there for social media. Now, what we want to do is then, again, move people from that big party, move them to the after party, and then use email to start to deepen those relationships, right? This is where we get people to kind of take that next step and get closer to you. And so what do we want to do here? Well, the big thing to recognize is that your success with this channel really starts with permission. It works well because it's what we call an opt-in marketing channel. People raise their hand and say, yeah, I want you to send me information, okay? And so that means you want to get them to say yes, and you want to provide clear opt-in language on the forms that you use so that people know what to expect, right? If you always want to position this in the sense of what is the value that I get as somebody subscribing in exchange for giving you my email address, right? Because nobody wakes up in the morning and says, I can't wait to get more email today, right? But if you're offering something that they find interesting, valuable, entertaining, fun, whatever the case may be, that's the stuff that they want to receive. So we often recommend you offer them something like your sign-up form that allows them to do that. Now, one thing I will tell you, and 
at some point if you own a business, if it hasn't happened already, somebody's gonna reach out to you and ask you if you wanna, wanna buy an email list, right? You wanna know if you want a list of subscribers that are interested in something, or I have all these email addresses that work at particular companies. Don't do this. Okay, the reason we don't want to do this is because oftentimes those people do not already have a relationship with your business. And think about how you react when you get this strange email in your inbox and it's not something that you specifically signed up for. And then you just start getting emails from them. You kind of have a negative reaction to that, right? And the last thing we want is for the first interaction with your business to be a negative one. And so, as tempting as it may seem to kind of jumpstart that, what we really want to do, what we recommend is that you start growing that list organically, right? Finding the people that you're already doing business with, trying to get them on that list, and then again, looking for the ways that, how can you offer something in exchange, right? And so, this is where, you know, we're really thinking about what that looks like. And I'm gonna talk about list growth a little bit later as we talk about text, because they're, they're quite similar to the types of things that you wanna offer in terms of how you get to be uh, but once you have people on your list, it's really about using two types of emails in your strategy. Okay, so now oftentimes I think we default to, oh, I'm trying to sell stuff for my business, so I'm going to keep sending emails that say buy stuff, buy stuff, buy stuff, right? We do want to do that from time to time. But, so those are what we would call promotional emails, right? Those are things that are offering a sale or trying to get somebody to buy something or they have some type of time sensitivity to them. So like think if you're trying to get people to come to an event, like a small business expo, for example, right? The other thing that we want to offer are non-promotional emails though. And these are more informational or entertaining or something that would again provide some value to somebody that's not asking them to buy something. Now the reason we want to do this is because, well frankly, not everybody is ready to buy something all of the time. And so it's a little bit like that friend that just keeps asking you, like, hey, I have a ride to the airport, can you do this for me, can you do that, right? You keep doing those things, and eventually you're like, all right, enough of this guy, right? Like, they're not doing anything for me, right? And so this is why you want to use these two types of emails, so that when somebody is not ready to buy something, they're still engaged with your business, they feel good about that relationship that you have, and then when they are ready to buy something, they think of your business first, right? Your business is top of mind, which is why we want to do this. Now, oftentimes, people get a little worried when they, we start talking about email, like, what am I going to say in my emails? What am I going to do? Now, ultimately, it actually doesn't have to be that hard. And, and it really comes down to answering three questions from the person that's receiving the email from you. And so let me walk you through those questions, right? When you think about the headline of your particular email, that's the kind of the big text, right? So right now, we're saying spring into savings, right? What we're answering is, what are you offering? What are you giving me? So in this example, we're offering people a chance to spring into savings, right? We're offering people some savings. And then you want to answer the question, well, how is that going to help the reader? So that becomes this body copy of your email. So here we're saying, hey, you know, you can take up to 30% off on all the items in our store. And so I'm offering you some savings. It's going to help you by giving you 30% off. And then the last question is, what should they then do next? And that gets to, well, order now, right? This is your button. Right, that's the thing that you want somebody to do. So whatever it is, whenever you're sending an email, whether it's a promotional email or a non-promotional email, you can kind of walk through these questions and that can help you think about like, all right, what do I actually have to say? And it keeps you very focused because we find the best emails that are really focused on getting somebody to do one thing or providing one piece of information are a lot better than trying to you know, do a whole bunch of things in one email, right? Because the more things you add, the less action start to take, okay? Uh, another thing to think about, the great thing about email, is that you can actually start